Well, welcome everybody to another installment of Meeting Spectrum, starting your career in tech. Thank you everybody for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. I actually had to look at the clock to see what time it is, but of course it's the evening. You're joining us for a fantastic presentation. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna give you a chance to get a glimpse into how tech career and internship at Spectrum can contribute to your professional growth and how our technology team works together to support our customers. The process and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having an engaged conversation with our panelists. We're going to be asking some questions and allowing them to tell their stories, their backgrounds, how they each got to here at Spectrum. And we're also going to allow some time at the very end for you to ask some questions to us and get that engaged conversation going as well. But before we're going to jump into that panelist discussion, I do have a brief PowerPoint. Not going to take all your day, I promise, just so that we can share a little bit more about interning spectrum so without further ado i'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that i can pull this up just a bit about my background my name is alex cunningham university recruiter i do work in the denver colorado office on the university team so i do help recruit for our spectrum 2020 summer internship program involved with a lot of recent graduates getting introduced to spectrum as well but i've been with spectrum for about three and a half years now only working with our internship program and I love it. I think it's the best position I've ever been in. But I mean, I, they're, they're not paying me any extra to tell you that. So let me tell you a bit more about the internships you can see if you want to join us as well. Also, how you're going to be able to apply to this internship. But internship and the dates of the program, we are looking to have a program that's going to be providing current students with current students, excuse me, with the exposure to real life business settings. This is also going to be giving them the opportunities to learn about our industry. We're going to be providing an atmosphere that it's intended to broaden an entry level candidates professional understanding while promoting self confidence accomplishment and career development interns will be assigned a manager and a mentor for the duration of our internship program so this is meant to be a very immersive experience meant to not be a copy running not meant to make copies for these managers type of internship it's not a basic role we're meant to treat you as kind of a junior level full time professional but what this program is going to get be broken down into it's going to be broken down into two components we first have our department focused responsibilities and then we are going to have our professional development the department focused responsibilities are going to be around 80 percent of our internship and that's going to be your team contribution that's going to be manager and mentor led what you're going to be doing on this side is going to be meaningful work in projects you're going to be working on projects that are working directly related to your job title, your degree, the background experience that you're hopefully learning in school right now, and then hopefully graduate with that experience to then apply for a full-time role. Internship also does have professional development that we are gonna kick off on June 1st. That's gonna be about 20% of our internship. That's gonna include executive speakers that we're having join us. We're gonna be doing a community service event. We celebrate National Intern Day as well, professional development sessions for helpful professional topics. And then we're going to round off our program with a final graduation hackathon type event. This is going to include a cross-functional group project where you're going to have a chance to work around other interns in other business units. So that networking piece is definitely going to be a huge portion of our internship. This is going to be 320 hours across 10 weeks for our 80% contribution for department-focused responsibilities and about 80% for the 10, 80% for the professional development for once again 20% of the internship. What and where we're recruiting. So on the left side of your screen, you're gonna see some of the locations where we're having these roles posted. And we do have these roles posted online right now. And just stay tuned. I promise I'm gonna to get to the screen where it says how to apply to these roles, but also feel free to follow up with me post conversation so that send me your LinkedIn, send me your email so that I know to follow up with you for our internship roles, but I believe we are going to reach out to you directly. Just on the left side of your screen, we have a few of our locations. We have Denver, we have St. Louis, we have Charlotte, we have Stanford. Those are going to be our corporate locations. And then we have New York City and Austin, Texas. Those are going to be our enterprise locations. We do have most of our engineering roles in Denver and Charlotte. Most of our IT positions are going to be in St. Louis and Charlotte as well. Stanford is going to be where our marketing and legal finance team sits as well. New York City and Austin smaller locations it's going to be our enterprise locations but uh, i do believe we still have opportunities in both of those locations if you're interested but what is it actually going to be taking what's it going to take to be an intern this year what are the qualifications here's our selection criteria 
you must be a rising junior or above, a senior or a first year master's student at an accredited four year college or university. You must have a 3.0 GPA or higher. You must have authorization to work in the United States without restrictions or need for future, future sponsorship. Your desired degree will vary by the internship position on what role that you're going to be applying for. Some have a little bit more strict requirements on the software and technology that they're looking for in their intern, as well as the types of degree. Some are a little bit more of an open position with a flexible skill set. But we're also going to be looking at specific technical requirements that, once again, may also vary by internship position. Recruiting timeline. What this is looking like from now until when we're done recruiting at the end of April, and then when the internship actually starts at the beginning of June. We are taking applications now. So like I mentioned, we do have roles posted online currently. We have a ton of open positions. We're interviewing now, meaning that we're screening applicants. The first step in our application process is to send you a video introduction. And as you can see on the next step right there, we're gonna be doing career fairs, info sessions, workshops similar to this so that we can get introduced to you, the students. You can get to introduce to us, the recruiters and the employees over here at Spectrum. Then we're gonna send you the on-demand video introduction. I promise it's not that scary. It's only 30 minutes to complete as well. It's gonna be done before you know it. But we use those as like an interview before an interview to meet you or have you meet the manager on kind of a virtual level, introduce you that way along with your resume. After these interviews with myself or someone on my team, we're going to send you over to the hiring manager. They're going to review your resume, hopefully request that technical interview, knock out what the day-to-day -day duties are, the project, software, technology, the specifics of the position so you know if it's a good fit for you. And then afterwards, we're going to have all of our offers done and out and accepted by the end of March. Now, what this means is we're starting our background checks after April 1st of this year, so we have that sharp deadline to get everything done by then. Most likely, we're going to have these rules filled far in advance of that. So if you're interested in applying for an internship role now, I would apply now. Get in touch with me now. Make sure you send your contact information over to me now. Do it now is what I'm trying to say. We're going to be starting the internship June 1st. University Relations team is going to host some Q&A sessions, more about our internship prior to the internship, and then everything's going to start June 1st, and we're going to run into that 10-week program. Now, I am excited to announce that we were actually selected in WayUp's top 100 internships program list for 2021. Now, what this means is that we are proud to be an internship program winner. Um, so we are one of WayUp's top 100 internship programs for 2021. This award was voted on by a panel of industry expert judges and thousands of public votes. So I do hope that you research our positions, look up the reviews, look up the videos of our past interns as well, and judge for yourself. This is gonna be a good program for you. But let's hear a little bit more or panelists, let me go ahead and introduce them briefly, and then I'll show you how to apply to these roles. We have Shashi Shamaro. Shamaro? I'm so sorry, I totally butchered that. I was practicing it. Shashi, you're going to have to forgive me on that one. Rocky Garcia. We have Benjamin Womack, Akshatha Krishnamurthy. Shashi is our VP of Video Operations. Rocky is our Director of Data Insights. Ben is our Associate Business Systems Analyst. And Akshatha is a Software Engineering Associate. These four panelists are going to be joining us today, and we're going to be asking them some hard, gritty, in-depth questions, mostly just about their experience, what they think about the internship program, some helpful professional topics as well. And then once again, we're going to run into some QA at the very end. So welcome panelists. I'll give you an introduction. Just a moment. I, I promise I'm not teasing it too much. But how are we actually going to apply to this internship? Applying for the internships is very easy. Jobs.spectrum.com slash university dash and dash early dash career. Lots of dashes in there, but you want to apply at that link at the top right there now. Applying for full-time roles, very similar. Jobs.spectrum.com, university at charter.com. We're meant to be a resource for you. So let us know what questions you have. Reach out to us with, if you've applied to a role so that we can follow up with it. Reach out to your link, our LinkedIn's as well. Mine's very easy to find. Alex Cunningham, Spectrum, search me up, send me a LinkedIn request. Let me know you met me at this event. If you've applied to a role, I'll make sure I guide you to the right place. If it's not my position, of course. But very easy to apply to these positions. All we're going to have you do is apply to the role, get the video introduction completed, then we're going to run into the technical round, which is going to be with the hiring managers. All this is doing, all, all this we're doing now. So just make sure you jump on this if you're interested. All right, panelists, are you there? Can you turn on your videos? Oh, thank goodness. I'm not the only one here. I'm not talking to myself. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. I very much appreciate your time today. What we're going to start off with is, first, we're going to go over your name, the length of time working here at Spectrum, your current role, 
your title, your business unit, what you're responsible for in your actual position. And why did you join Spectrum? And what keeps you here? And don't worry, I'll repeat all this before I actually jump into you. But Shashi, once again, if you can introduce yourself, go over your name, length of time working here at Spectrum, current role, title, and business unit. And why did you join Spectrum and what keeps you here? Sure, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining this event. I'm really happy to be here and excited to answer the questions. So hopefully I can get to meet you here working at Spectrum and uh, looking forward to that. So my name is Shashi Shamarab. I've been working with Spectrum since 2013. I'm working as vice president at video operations, which is part of network operations, a business unit at Spectrum. I manage uh, the operations of our video applications called Spectrum TV app. This is an IP-based application that runs on multiple devices, such as mobile device, laptops, smart TVs, and connected devices like Roku, Xbox, Apple TV, and on. If you are in a region where we have our services, you should download and uh, try to see how, how it works for you. I oversee the team, which is responsible for building, managing production platforms and applications delivering the content over IP. And finally, last but not but the least, we are also handling the customer issues. So coming to the question, why did I join Spectrum and what keeps me here? So that's an interesting story. <laughs> I'd like to share. It's a small, funny story, but I'm sure uh, it will make you smile. So <laughs> when, when my parents first bought the TV set for our house, I was very young and I was pretty fascinated to see people moving around, talking, singing, all in the small box. I always wondered how does this all happen? And one day to my parents' surprise, I just opened the TV set to see where this is all happening and only to find out that TV had lots of wires, chips, and cathode ray tube. It's a gigantic cathode ray tube. So my curiosity um, you know, started growing and I started exploring and reading books to solve this mystery. So uh, at some point of time, I figured out, you know, the radio waves makes a big difference. They carry signals and the antennas, which capture them, converts them and shows us the images. But then only to, you know, when I went to engineering school and started learning about telecommunications, I found out actually how television works and I was able to actually connect the dots. So learning this uh, helped me really decide my career and paved a path to pursue and grow my career in the television field. So when I received um, lots of offers after, um, you know, to work at the end of my college days, uh, it was all mostly related to building software applications and, um, a, you know, testing and other thing. But because of my passion, I was always yearning for an opportunity to work in television and uh, cable companies. So when I got that opportunity at Spectrum, I was really overjoyed, thrilled, and I took that, uh, you know, op uh, the opportunity and uh, put it into complete use. So that's how I ended up at Spectrum. So what keeps me here? That's also an interesting question. So good thing about working at Spectrum is, you know, it, it offers so many opportunities. Uh, trust me, you have the ability to navigate your career Spectrum provides so many services. We are in so many different fields, video, internet, voice, Wi-Fi, and mobile services. We also offer a wide range of job opportunities, like you can work in product and program management, data analysis, engineering, software application development, financial management, and so on. So you can figure out you know, what interests you most and what your nature is today and what you want to be in future and you can decide the right thing for your career. If you look at my journey alone, um, you know, I started as an engineer and I was very passionate. I always wanted to be an engineer, but then I changed uh, my direction and went into management position. And I tried multiple things like release management, environment management, so many things. Then finally I ended up coming into operations and I've been with operations for almost three, three plus years now, and I really enjoy. So, you know, you can really find lots of opportunities at Spectrum. You can figure out uh, what you want to do and where you want to, and it's, it's very flexible. It, it helps you wherever you want to be, and uh, you can shine your best skills in whatever the area you like to be in. 
So that, that's really what keeps me motivated to work at Spectrum. And of course, Spectrum has lots of talented people. You can always learn, even now, today, I keep learning from so many engineers who are talented, uh, better than me. They have lots of, lot more knowledge. And I, I just keep continuing to grow. So I love it here. I'm sure you will also love it. And I can just tell you that you will never have a bored time here at Spectrum for sure. So uh, if you are interested, please apply and uh, we'll be happy to work with you. All right, I think we can wrap the presentation up here. That was like a perfect answer. Thank you for the enthusiasm there. That was that was perfect. And you even told them how to apply for our role. So I, that was, I, I don't know, everybody following up that answer. You got some tough shoes to fill. But thank you so much for joining us here on the presentation. And I, I like how you've had not quite the linear journey through our charter, but it has gone through different directions, starting in engineering and then ending up in operations. So, I mean, that's honestly what we're looking for for a lot of our employees is that growth. But we all have different paths that we're going to be going down. But you have a very interesting path that you've got here and I'm, I'm glad that you're here so thank you for joining us rocky if you can go ahead and introduce yourself as well so name length of time working at spectrum your current role title and business unit and then why did you join spectrum and then what keeps you here hi everyone um i am so excited to be here and i hope to meet some of you guys soon my name is rocky garcia and i am actually a director at leading the video data insights team within the product and technology organization. I'm actually, I'm actually going to switch this around a bit. Um, what I do from um, and what I lead is basically utilize data to go back to teams like Sashi and the product group to robust our product. We provide insights on how the product is working, how the customers are utilizing um, basically an endless number of metrics. Um, how long have I been here? I've been here for 10 years, technically. I started off as a contractor for four years um, and then transitioned over to a full-time employee. Um, I started off because as a contractor, there was this big project on big data. And at that time, after graduating college, it was a big hype. And I said, I wanna be at the you know leading and being part of the latest and greatest technology. Um, I did that for four years um, as a contractor, started off within the video space, doing big data, then moved over to other areas. At that time, it was Time Warner Cable. Um, went to Herndon, Virginia, and started off big data in the wireless, in the network side. And then I was a little curious to see if telecommunications was the thing for me long-term. And I actually stepped out, stepped out of Charter, Time Warner, for six months. And I realized I just, I loved to, uh, cable and I couldn't get away. And so I came back and uh, I started off as an FTE. Um, I think similar to Sashi, it's the opportunities that Charter provides. Um, there's never a day that's exactly the same um, that keeps me here. I'm constantly challenged. I am constantly growing. Um, I have people to look up to. Sashi is actually a, a, a partner. And so it's, it's great to have, to always be constantly growing and I'm never ever bored. Um, so I hope to see you guys soon. It's a great company to work for. Um, and yeah. All right, sounds great. Well, thank you for joining us as well. And we do have some questions geared directly towards you and Sashi. So I believe we'll kind of have like a tandem effort over here. So thank you very much for, for joining the conversation. Ben, I'd like to walk over to you as well. walk. Why don't I say walk? If we can transition over to you as well, if you could introduce yourself, your name, length of time working here at Spectrum, current title, business unit, and why did you join Spectrum? And once again, what keeps you here? Definitely. Thanks for the introduction. I'm glad everyone could make it today and uh, spend their time today on this session. Um, it's going to be a lot of valuable information that you're not going to want to miss. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Ben. Um, I've actually been at Charter now for 11 months. Um, so I'm actually haven't been here for too long. Um, I'm actually a two-time intern, so returning intern, um, and then converted to a full-time role within the same team all of the uh, times I've worked here. A um, little bit about what I do. Um, I'm actually an IT application engineer, um, which my role displayed through the company is a systems analyst, which I am. Um, 
I focus on a tool called Clarity within our product and technology organization. And uh, what Clarity focuses on is the project management organization with, throughout Charter. Um, some of the project managers that control all of their resources, um, monitor their projects, update financial information, such as work orders for contractors. Um, we pretty much govern the whole uh, gist of that information. Um, so I've been dealing a ton of time on that. Um, and um, why did I join the company? Um, so that's a good question for me. Honestly, it was the location. Um, I'm actually only 25 minutes from the Maryland Heights office. Um, and it was just a great opportunity for an internship. Um, there's a ton of great benefits. It's a great paid um, internship. Um, it's a great um, resume booster and a great career opportunity down um, the road. Um, I mean, looking at some statistics that have been shared with me, and I think that might be shared later through the internship program or from other resources. Um, a lot of people stay here for a long time, so it's a great way to, to build a career. Um, what keeps me here is those statistics, of course, um, the opportunities that are available, as everyone mentioned, um, and the company culture. Um, I really love the people I work with, and I feel like um, if you love what you do and who you work with, you don't work a day in your life. So that's pretty much all I got there. All right. Throwing out the cliche of the year. I'm just kidding, buddy. I got to say, I agree with you 100%, though. It is the people that's really kept me here, though. It's the people. It's the job. I don't feel like I'm waking up on a Monday morning and then going into work necessarily. I know I have work to do. I mean, we all have work to do on Mondays, but I do feel like this is something that like a career, I feel like I'm a professional here and we're valued. You know, it's, it's a big company. Like you said, it's a great resume booster. Spectrum is very well known across the U.S. We're in 40 one different states, I believe. Uh, we have a lot of employees, 95,000 employees that we're working with right now, 30 million plus customers. So we're big. It's great for your resume. It's a great place to start your career. It's a great place to stay at your career as well. I mean, people don't really want to leave here. I feel like we have a solid culture, builds team members pretty quickly. And it's kind of like a family environment. Even if you're not looking for a family, you're just going to get sucked into one. But thank you very much, Ben, for joining us. And Akshatha, yep. sorry to keep you in the dark over there if we can go over to you as well. If you could explain a little bit about your role, sorry, your name and length of time working at Spectrum. Ooh, how did I forget that? Your current role, your title, your business unit, and what you're working on currently. And then why did you join Spectrum and what keeps you here? Yeah. So hello, everyone. I'm excited to be part of this call and share a lot of information that I learned throughout my time at Spectrum. So I am Akshita Krishnamurti. Uh, I joined Spectrum as part of the internship last summer. I've been here for eight months. Like part of it was the internship, part of it was part-time work uh, during my uh, final semester at Mines. And uh, I joined uh, as a full-time software engineering associate in January. And um, so basically I work for a team called Emerging Tech, which is part of the product and technology group. And this team is uh, basically looks into all the emerging technologies that uh, Starrant can explore. And basically we are in, I am uh, involved in a project which looks into machine learning. And uh, there are also people in my team who work on uh, augmented reality and virtual reality and uh, the opportunities that Spectrum has in those fields. And uh, so I basically am a very, uh, uh, happy to be part of my team because I joined uh, the internship because I was a machine learning intern. And I, that, was some, uh, that was a field of interest for me throughout my master's. And I was really happy to get an internship in that particular field. And I got the opportunity to work under a great manager and I had a great mentor to guide me throughout the internship. And I learned a lot during my internship and I was able to get some really good results through uh, towards the end of it. And that's why uh, that kind of motivated me to do more, give more to the team. And that's why I returned as a full-time employee. Um, so I hope that the internship, the people and people here can be part of the internship program and get more out of it and also find their way into Spectrum. Yeah, thank you for that introduction. And uh, I mean, Akshatha, Ben, they are shining examples of what the internship can lead you to, which is a full-time role. I mean, a job, everybody wants a job, but they're here, they converted, they liked what they were doing. They liked their team enough to stick around for a little bit longer anyways, but we're glad that we have them on our team. 
they are examples of what our internship can lead to. And typically we look for around 35% conversion on our internship every single year. But I mean, doesn't mean that we can't go higher than that. Goal is to get that early talent into Spectrum, the recent graduate talent so that we can keep growing and keep, adva keep advancing in our careers like Shashi mentioned earlier. But thank you very much. Thank you very much for the wonderful introductions. I think we set a good tone for this presentation coming up. But I do have some panel questions that I like to jump into as well. And then what I'm going to start with is a question geared towards pretty much everybody. And I might cycle through you one by one. I might switch up the order a bit, but then I'm going to go into more individual questions as well. So to stay on your toes right now, I could ask you a question at any time. Just hit the buzzer when you're ready to respond. Just kidding, no buzzer. But we're going to start with this. Could you give us a glimpse into life as a technology professional here at Spectrum? So what is it like? to work in your specific business unit, if you could share some of the exciting projects that you're working on and how they're making an impact. Rocky, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I'll pick a quick area of video. So all of you guys are familiar with like your Netflix app video application. Spectrum has something similar. It's called STVA. And I primarily create metrics around this product that understand um, what is the customer experience. So is the customers are experiencing buffering? Are you guys seeing a delay when you start up uh, the application? Um, are you having issues watching potentially football versus, I don't know, cartoons? Where, where my team in my day-to-day -day is to identify um, the behaviors uh, of the app. Um, and then report those out to our different stakeholders. Our stakeholders can be um, marketing, it can be operations to fix issues, um, it can be the product. Do we need to make optimizations, for instance, on our client, on your Roku, on your iPhone app? Um, so that's basically a day to day is reviewing metrics from what our customers um, are experiencing, and then go out to our uh, peers. Um, to identify are those areas of optimization. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much for sharing about yeah. that project. Yep. And Ben, can you share us a little bit more about your position? So like a glimpse into life of your team, and what your team is going to be doing or what your team is doing now currently, what it's like to work in your business unit, and then maybe an example of a project that you're working on. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so for my team directly, um, we're kind of a niche tool within the company. Um, we have about 12 people on our team total. Um, and what we do and what we function as is kind of a support for um, a big chunk of the company. Um, I touched on earlier how Clarity supports um, a portion of the project management organization. And for those of you who don't know what Clarity is, um, it's similar to Smartsheet or another um, tool that's used to track information and also can track charts and just uh, something that you would use as like a WBS structure in class for a project, um, except it's a lot more advanced with time reporting, uh, projects, resources, lots of money. Um, another uh, area of items that we do um, weekly and periodically is reporting to leadership. Um, we use a tool called Jaspersoft that's connected to Clarity and we create custom reports and set schedules to send those reports to leadership throughout the company. So those actually go out to vice presidents within the company. They go out to EVPs within the company um, and um, they just report on, usually they're called one pagers and they give a snapshot of how projects are doing throughout the company. Um, so that's a big area of what we focus on. Another area of what we focus on is sometimes daily audits. Um, we focus on auditing throughout the company, um, the information I talked on projects, uh, money, um, work order information, making sure people are get, getting paid and accurately for what they put towards a project. Um, so there's that um, one big project that we're currently focused on. Um, so within our organization, um, the strategy, which is within pro product and technology, which I'm in, um, we're having a big uh, kind of like organizational restructure, which with a company of this size, it's pretty frequent, it seems. Um, we have a new head, uh, Jake Perlman, um, and he is bringing in the idea of portfolios within Clarity, which is a new design, um, kind of like the one pager I touched on. It's going to be new reporting, um, lots of new stuff to build within our tool, um, a lot of new people to add, new people to remove, um, and then 
some more custom reports being built for the portfolios. And uh, what a portfolio is, um, it's um, kind of hard to describe without sharing a screen, but uh, it's just a end-to-end -end snapshot of a project from uh, life to end, pretty much. And uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, that's a great explanation. I am going to follow up with you in a bit for another question on more of what we're looking at in the future on that end, if that makes sense. But that that was a great explanation on what you're currently working on. I don't know too much about that software myself. It goes right over my head. But I'm sure that someone on this call was like, you know what? I'm working right on that. I might be interested in learning more about that kind of project or internship or full-time, something in the future or on that end. Akshatha, I'd like to go over to you as well. So can you give us a little bit of uh, how about your role? So what you're working on your team, projects that you're working on, something that's making an impact as well, but what's the typical life for you in your role as a software engineer? Sure, Alex. So um, I actually am really uh, excited to be a part of the Emerging Tech team because my team basically looks at all the new technologies and I get to, I get to actually work on them. So it's kind of exciting. And I myself am working, as I said before, on machine learning. And one particular project that I'm working on currently is a, a project called Application Flow Signature, which basically uses machine learning to kind of uh, identify the traffic without actually looking into the packet. So it's kind of like, it sees the shape of the traffic and identifies the type of traffic. Like, are you doing a video conferencing? Are you streaming some video or are you doing some real time? Uh, streaming or doing so, something like that. And it, it's, it kind of is useful in the way that you can do differential quality of service, like provide better quality for video and stuff like that when you detect uh, such traffic. And also probably provide better parental controls, like if you can find out that your kid is kind of streaming some things and you can probably stop the uh, streaming or something like that. So it's, it's, it's a useful thing. And my team also is looking into augmented reality, virtual reality, which is also very exciting. So <laughs> they also work on optimizing the rendering for the AR VR headsets, which is interesting. And I would like to be part of that too, if possible. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Well, that's, that is extremely exciting. If you need someone to like take some notes for you to maybe get a free headset, I'm your guy, you know, I'll totally join you on that end. But wow, that's some really big stuff. I don't think people really know that Spectrum works on things like that, like augmented reality. So I'm really glad that you joined this conversation here because that's probably a new topic that people didn't think that telecom or even this industry even works on. But that's pretty fantastic. Exactly. I'm sure you're probably going to get some people following up with you on your projects, and I might be following up with you on what this is going to look like in the upcoming future. But thank you for sharing about that. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. And Shashi, don't think I forgot about you back there. If you can tell us about your role, what is it like for a technology professional in your position? So what is your business unit working on? Any exciting projects or anything that you could share with this group today? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So my, my team is, um, you know, as I said, like I work in operations, my team is responsible for several things. You know, we, we basically manage our signature application, you can call it, it's called Spectrum TV app, STVA. So it is, um, you know, it runs on so many different platforms. So we have to support managing and, um, you know, all of our platforms and also making sure the streaming is happening accurately. So there are several things we do. Um, we, we work closely with all our partners at engineering, and then we kind of make that to available to our customers. So being in operation, it's a lot of responsibility. We need to make sure the applications are available all the time. They are stable. You know, customers are not getting um, you know, bad experience. We don't want to hear uh, complaints from customers when when things go wrong, especially like uh, you know major events like playoffs or Super Bowls. Uh, pretty much everybody gets mad when their video experience is not good, right? So we need to make sure we need to be on top of things uh, to ensure our infrastructure is running as expected, applications are performing, and whenever you know we see a growth in our product, we need to make sure how we can augment and provide capacity so that people don't you know, have bad experience. So on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, most of our engineers work closely with engineering teams. And um, 
to try to get software releases or any kind of platform builds and identify issues wherever we have. And especially we work closely with Rocky's team because they provide the metrics. So we look at those metrics to see, you know, how we are performing, what areas requires improvement, what areas had challenges and uh, what, what, what happened? Why did it happen? And uh, what can we learn from it? And how can we make things better so that it doesn't happen again? So these are all the things uh, that usually an engineer does in our business unit. So we are working on several uh, projects this year. Most of our projects are uh, centered around basically uh, building resiliency. We wanna make sure you know there is no manual intervention when things go wrong. We want it to automatically self-heal and um, work as expected. So those are all like big challenges that we are trying to work on to make everything self-healing, resilient, robust applications so that um, people don't have to stay up all night supporting it. Nobody wants to stay up all night supporting anything. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about everybody on the call here, but... I'd say that's that's pretty much the ultimate goal is a customer's experience. You know, we want to make sure everything is running smoothly, or at least you think it's running smoothly, because on the back end, everybody's working furiously hard, such as Sashi. So we appreciate that you shared a little bit more about your project and your assignment, or not your assignment, your business unit, excuse me. Okay, so I do want to pivot a little bit backwards towards techn technology and innovation. So Ben, I know you you're waiting for this question. You've just been dying. You're all shaken. So how is Spectrum driving innovation and standing out in a technological competitive marketplace? Yeah, I think um, a big thing that comes from that question, and a lot of it probably wouldn't be on my team since I'm more of a support, support role, um, but it's just the people working on the, the front end designing our new routers, new Wi-Fi equipment, expanding our, our outreach and equipment and making it more widely available and quicker, quicker, quicker. Um, that's always the, the thing people talk about, faster speeds, um, lower um, connection drops. And as Saucy was saying, um, we want to try to cut the uh, drop to, drops of connection as, as low as possible. Um, so from a support side of things, on my end, um, we really help those individuals working on those projects really get what they need and make sure they have it when it's ready to go so we can get that to our customers um, faster. Um, I think uh, a big way that um, the company overall, Spectrum, is switching to kind of adapt to more of an environment is um, really focusing on its, its cable offer offerings. Um, I know there's been a ton of improvements in the app um, lately, and it just seems like it's always improving with new um, on-demand shows. There's actually Spectrum Originals now. Um, I know our Wi-Fi has continuously been improving um, as far as quality goes, um, increased speeds go. Um, looks like we even offer gigabit internet now um, in various areas. Um, so, you know, just trying to compete with our competitors by offering the best and highest quality for an affordable price, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. And just supporting <laughs> that overall mission and goal. Sure, totally. Everybody wants things done fast. That's for sure. I, I hate it when like I have to microwave something and it takes over two minutes. I'm almost like, I'm just going to starve. I'm not going to eat it. But I'd say everything getting done quicker. I don't know if everybody remembers the DL dial up days where we had to listen to that modem, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, maybe your internet started, maybe it didn't, you never know. But those kind of things have been greatly improved, if not eliminated by people like Ben in their positions and what we're working on as a cable and telecommunications industry. So that's huge that what you're working on, especially the speeds as well. And then, I, you know, I, I recently learned in this last year that Spectrum had like the fastest 5G connectivity for mobile services. I don't know if you knew that. Is that true still? But I, I, that's huge. I mean, my phone, I rely on that to play video games, to stream movies, to talk to people if I had people to talk to. So I think that the speed that we're getting into the innovation, the technology, I think we're right there in the forefront of that as well. But thank you very much for being a part of that and joining this team recently as a full-time employee. So thanks. Back towards Shashi and Rocky, they're working on their team membership, team chip. They're working together for a lot of their work. And if I can simplify this down, we know that product and technology designs it and net operations operates it. 
Could you share with the students what this means on a day-to-day -day basis or on a project-to-project -project basis? And Shashi, we'll start with you and then Rocky will have you follow as well. Sure, I, I think it will be better if Rocky starts because we are the, the people at the end of the line. So we, we basically consume whatever the product and technology provides and then we kind of deploys and manages it. So um, I'll let Rocky go first. Thank you, Sashi. Yeah, just to piggyback on what Sashi said, first and foremost, product and technology's main purpose is to create the most competitive products and deliver highly rated customer experiences. So in other words, we're basically, or how I see it is, we're basically the brain of the company we're responsible for business development, business planning, software development, connectivity, and um, along with all of those different departments, we're responsible for researching, designing, implementing, um, and figuring out what that roadmap of each product is and how the customers are going to adopt to it. Um, once we basically have an idea of what the next feature will be, um, what the cost is gonna be, what, how it's gonna look like, and then the actual implementation, that's when we hand off to NetOps or Sashi to actually roll it out to our customers. Um, so, and I, I think Ben, you're part of the, our product and technology group as well. So you guys can hear he's working on reports. He's working on making our, in, our team work together cohesively while I'm working on a data portion that fits into the big picture of the company. I hope that kind of makes sense into what product and technology is. I'll hand it off to you, Sashi. Yeah, thanks, Rocky. So what we do is, as Rocky mentioned, uh, the product and technology teams develops several applications. Um, like we have video application running on our set-top boxes, on our mobile devices, we have Spectrum Mobile, we have Wi-Fi and all those things. So operations, network operations is basically taking all of those things and making it available to customers. That's in a very simplified manner to say. <laughs> so we are like end consumers. We uh, work closely with all of the product and technology teams. We are pretty much involved from the beginning because um, ultimately once it's handed off to operations, we are the one who are running in operations so we need to know how the application works what type of things it can uh, create and uh, what type of challenges we can come across and how do we support the growth um, constant growth that we are seeing at spectrum so all of these are important factors so we work closely with them from the time they start you know even inception uh, period when they start getting the idea and start uh, materializing it and building the plan of how they are going to architect, develop, and um, get this uh, all deployed in production. So we we are working closely with them, you know, uh, pretty much in line with everything that's going on. Um, and we take all of the builds and then we build the platforms and in production, basically, like whether it is in cloud or in data centers, we build the whole infrastructure and platform where we can host these applications and run them. And we provide all the monitoring capabilities so we know when things are going well, when things are breaking, so we can take actions to help our customers get their experience back. And uh, we also, you know, as I said, we take the metrics from Rocky's team, we measure and see, you know, what are the improvements area that we need to focus on, and we constantly thrive to work on those solutions so that we, we can provide the best of best experience to our customers. So in general, you know, operations are like very close to customers. We hear what customers are having uh, the issues with, and we try to address them. Whether it is single customer or multiple customers, operation kind of comes into the picture of, you know, understanding what customers are going through, what do they expect, what they want to see, and then we kind of provide the feedback back to the product and technology teams as well. Yeah, so I would say we don't really design by ourselves. That wouldn't be very successful if we didn't bring in NetOps um, into the picture, but we do, we are a big partner, despite that we're in two different organizations. 
right. Well, I'm going to say it. Teamwork makes the dream work. I know everybody's waiting for that, but thank you so much for that explanation. I actually understood that pretty well, and you broke it down fairly easily for me. So thank you for sharing your experience on that, both of you. And I'm actually looking at the time, and this just flew by. So I've had a wonderful experience so far with all of our panelists and asking you questions. We're going to run into some Q&A in just a second, but I do want to ask everybody one final question. And if you could make this one, two sentences, one, two words, three words, just brief is what I'm getting at. What is one final piece of advice that you would leave for participants on this call today? Ben, we'll start with you since you're smiling. Um, so going back to what you said earlier, uh, don't delay, apply today. Um, as you know, Alex was saying, there's a ton of great open positions available within the company. Um, and they're, it's a great company to work for. So I encourage you all to apply or um, apply to another company of something you're interested in. Um, never should be afraid to take your shot. So good luck. Rocky? Yeah, I would say just don't let fear stop you from taking that jump. Um, you never know what that jump is going to take you to. So I hope to see you guys apply. Um, and if it's not us, just take that leap and don't be scared. All right. Shashi? I would just say be flexible and be open to any opportunities you get. You never know what you like, so be flexible, be open-minded, so you can always figure out what you ultimately like. All right. And Akshata? I would like to say that don't be afraid to learn new things. Be open. Try to apply to whatever it interests you. If you don't find something of interest, try to see potential in a role and see where it can get you in the long run. That's it. All right. Fantastic advice. Thank you, panelists, for joining us today. Let's run right into Q&A so that we can answer some of these questions before the time runs out. So let's go ahead. And if we have anybody that's brave enough to come on live and ask their question, we would love to hear from you. We're going to try to speed through these as quick as possible so that we can answer as many questions. But is there anybody that we can bring off or bring in life? Looks like we have a couple, actually. Okay. So, Darius, we're going to start with you. Just hold tight. Um, so, earlier uh, we were talking about how um, one of the projects was uh, monitoring packets and whatnot. I was wondering uh, if we could get a little more elaboration on. <clears throat> what what kind of tools you're using for that and what you think the outcomes are in near term? Yeah, so uh, basically what we are trying to do is uh, currently, I think when you want to see what traffic it is, there are deep packet inspection based methods. If you know what that is, that is basically we have to look, look at the whole contents of the packets and see what is inside to understand what traffic it is. What we are trying to do is try to do a privacy preserving approach for this and we are not looking into the packet are basically trying to see the shape of the traffic like for example upstream traffic has more traffic going up downstream tra traffic has more traffic coming down so the shape differs so we're trying to see the patterns in this shape and uh, using machine learning te techniques to identify those and identify traffic uh, of each type you were alluding to i think some of the benefits that you think are going to come out of that. Can you talk a little bit more about what you think the near yeah. term? Yeah, so basically this is the main uh, point of this is probably to uh, give more quality of service to, uh, to more intensive video intensive applications like streaming or gaming or cloud gaming and stuff like that. So uh, we basically detect the traffic and the, for the traffic that needs more bandwidth, we provide more bandwidth and for the traffic that doesn't need much, we, we take some bandwidth away or we, just, we try to distribute the bandwidth uh, as required. And it also, um, there is also application parental control where if, uh, if you have some kind of setting that says, okay, this traffic is, shouldn't, should, shouldn't be allowed for this particular uh, family member. So we can, we can see if this traffic is being done, being, uh, is going on right now, and then that, that can be disabled. Uh, so that, that those are all the kind, kinds of applications that you can use this uh, particular application for. Thank you. I, I thought that's what it was, but I, I just wanted to ask some clarifying questions just to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you for coming off mute for your question. If we could take another question in the chat or coming off mute. 
Okay, I think it's my turn. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on my video. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel. Nice to meet y'all. I appreciate y'all taking the time. But my, my question is just a little bit more general, more about the internship program. I know you mentioned that there we get assigned a manager and a mentor. And so I was just wondering more about how was your relationship with the mentor and the manager? And just to know more about how was your learning experience with them? Was it something that was just like an instant connection or was it, how did you approach them on, you know, all sorts of that stuff? Um, so, hey, thanks for coming off mute and asking the question there. Um, so really um, with my two internship experiences, um, I had the same mentor um, each time, of course. And uh, I'd say really just uh, get to know them. Um, whenever you get stuck um, through, you know, your initial tasks that your direct manager gives you, uh, bounce them off of your uh, mentor, ask them questions like, hey, how do we do this? Do we, how do we do that? Um, you know, I think another great way to get involved with the team and your mentor is maybe ask them out to lunch if you're in an in-person office. Um, I know I did that and it just instantly made the connection go a lot smoother. Um, he's actually one of the closest people I am with on the team today. So um, it's a great opportunity to uh, have a mentor and a manager um, on a team here. Um, and then maybe I, I'd say just one final thing is to um, just to your manager, maybe to tackle a project with your mentor. Um, I know within the internship program, you work on a project with cross-functional teams um, and pitch that to um, um, leadership within the company and other people. Um, but, you know, a small project that could be tackled in a few weeks with your mentor could really uh, build some hands-on experience and a connection overall. So, Just to add on to what Ben said, um, you know, at Spectrum, most of the people are very approachable. So if you find a certain people to be your mentor, you can always go and approach them and ask them, can, can they be your mentor? Can they help you? They will definitely take, uh, take the time to guide you as well. Or you can reach out to your supervisor and ask them to introduce you to somebody and then you can get, get introduced to the mentor as well. Thank you so much. Okay. I've been knocking through some of the questions and answer, Q&A question answers, Q&A in the chat. So if I've answered your question, hopefully, if not, type in the chat so I can follow up with you as well. But just for a few questions before we jump into Tim and Noah's question, uh, we unfortunately are not able to hire any students that will require sponsorship now or in the future for our corporate internship program. That's part of our eligibility requirements. We do not offer a housing stipend or compensation for relocation as well. So uh, unfortunately, that would not be an option um, for our corporate internship program. Full-time may be a completely different situation. That's usually on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, Tim actually has a question, Tim James. This question is for every panelist. What's the greatest challenge you faced in your role and how did you overcome it? And I'd love for every, every panelist to answer that question, but um, Rocky, do you wanna go ahead and take that question? Yeah, I think uh, I actually got, um, I moved from network operations to the product and technology organization back in 2016. Um, it was a very, I think it was very hard for me to switch context from being a day-to-day -day engineer, thinking about keeping a system alive. Um, we have SLAs, we have uptimes that we have to commit, um, which that in turn reduces to customer impact. And then transitioning, um, that was my day-to-day, -day, right, for about five, six years. And then transitioning over to the product organization where I had to think big picture, big picture, sorry, and lead a team, which was, a completely different way of thinking that I needed to do within such a short time period. Um, now I knew that anything that was going to be rolled out had an impact, not just to my team, but to the product rollout, to the organization and to charter itself. Um, I did lean a little, on a lot of mentors that had been doing this previously. Um, I also had to read a lot um, to know what it was to lead a team. I started off with three people um, and within the last three years, I've grown to 35. Um, so I think every day um, to me, it's a challenge because I have to keep myself on my toes, but keep myself studying and learning and being open-minded every single day to 
be a better person than I was yesterday. Um, but I would say that that was, was my hardest switch going from an engineer to a management position. All right. And Shashi, I'd also like to gather your opinion on that one as well, if you can. Yeah, on the similar note, you know, I have been, um, I have more than 25 years of experience and most of my time I spent working as either as a developer or a architect coming over to operations was a biggest challenge because, you know, you had to be ready, you had to be available 24 by seven and you don't know when to expect what, there is no, there is nothing you can plan for anything, anytime can go wrong. Right, so that was the biggest challenge I had. Uh, but then once I got in here and understood, you know, what can we do to be prepared? How can we implement processes that can help us not to be, you know, working 24 by seven that helped out uh, really well. So it, it, even today, as Raki mentioned, I, I face different challenges every day, but, you know, connecting and partnering with the, all the organizations within Charter has really helped me to overcome those. Okay. I believe that's probably the most amount of time that we're having for answering questions in our Q&A section. So I think we are good to wrap it up here if we can. So panelists, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a great time conversing with each other and answering my questions, even though they're a bit awkward, but having fun. I think this was fun. I think this was good, a new year, to get these opportunities out, to get these introductions as well. Follow up with us as well. If you have any questions, send us a connection on LinkedIn. Let me know if you're interested in applying for internship roles, if there's any other questions that we can follow up and answer for you. But honestly, the last thing I can ask of you is just to honestly have a good night tonight, you know, have a good evening, get some rest, relax, pizza, TV. I don't know, go have a good time. Just know that your internet service is getting quicker because of us. So you can thank us, but I'm just kidding. Panelists, thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you all have a great evening as well. Brandon, thank you very much for hosting us for this Way Up event. And we hope to partner again with you in the future. But if you are interested in applying for internship roles, please visit jobs.spectrum.com. Email us at university at charter.com or visit jobs.spectrum.com slash university dash and dash early dash career. All right, everybody have a great night.